All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and I want to start by asking, is Coinbase in trouble? Binance has introduced a zero fee trading for Bitcoin against the dollar, and Coinbase is notoriously expensive. Now, Coinbase is really good, in my opinion, in terms of onboarding noobs, onboarding no-coiners. Um, it's by far one of the simplest apps to use, but you pay for this in terms of charges and fees it's very expensive to use and you also pay for this when when there's big market plunges they're known to go offline and do some other shady stuff but in terms of like an ease to use app for the for the first time user that's kind of where that's that's what they're aimed at right and then once you build on your bitcoin knowledge and your crypto knowledge you will eventually leave coinbase and go elsewhere now coinbase has been downgraded due to substantially weaker revenue and if you scroll down here you'll see so they were reporting a quarterly loss of $430 million and a 19% drop in monthly users. It's fair to mention here that you would expect this since this is a bear market. Now, when everything was going well, Coinbase made $2.2 billion in revenue from transaction fees in Q4. So this was from transaction fees alone, by the way. So you can see that when the market's doing well, Coinbase and exchanges are going to do well. And conversely, in a bear market, not so much. They are, however... This is brand new news, launching a crypto derivatives product aimed at retail traders. So is leverage good? I don't know. On the one hand, yeah, you can hedge your risk. On the other hand, really, it's for experienced traders only. Let's be honest, otherwise you're going to blow up. But either way, that's progress for Coinbase. So I wanted to make this point. Crypto Rovers made it for me. He says he's mega bullish on Bitcoin here. It may take another few weeks, but the opportunity won't become much bigger. And this is what I wanted to illustrate with the next chart. So we're down here. If you've been watching any of the previous videos, you'll know that we are screaming buy in most places. Um, the question is really, oh, is there going to be one final dip down or is the low in and are we going to grind? The reason I wanted to show you this is just because it's a nice way of providing context. When we made the, the low, this took weeks and weeks and weeks. Each one of these candles is a week. So it took weeks and weeks and weeks of sideways and only about here. Were you able to start thinking, hmm, maybe there's some life in this. And then even for this plunge, which was technically a V-shaped recovery, but there was still this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish, six or seven weeks of, is it, isn't it? Is this a bear flag? Are we going to go lower? And I just want you to be aware that you have to be open to this. Yes, we could have one more plunge down, but also if we start to grind sideways or round up or start to just grind up like this, then... I think it's pretty safe to say that we may have already seen the lows. The Pi Cycle indicator successfully called all the prior tops so far, and we had bottom indications here. Now the next one's not quite flashed yet, but it is due probably within the next 60 days. So that tells us that we are definitely getting close now. More confluence in the sense that we've got this logarithmic channel, and here we are, bouncing off of it. Zooming in on this, you can see that the current structure Incredibly similar to these other capitulative moves, with these two tops being classic blow-off tops. This one we have more of a Wyckoff distribution followed by liquidity trap. But the point is, did we just bounce off of this channel? Is this a paradigm shift and are we going to break down? Probably not. And the reason for this is, let's dive into some macro here. The Fed's balance sheet just expanded for the third week in a row in June. The rise of 1.9 billion increased the size of the Fed's balance sheet to 8.934 trillion. I wonder when the Fed will stop creating inflation by ending QE and actually start fighting it by beginning QT. The answer is they're not going to because they want inflation because they need inflation because there's no other way to service their 30 and a half trillion dollars of debt that they've got. The Fed can either bring inflation down to 2%, cause financial crisis, bank failures, stock, real estate, bond market crashes. The US government will default on its treasury debt and likely start a war because who owns this treasury debt? Well, sovereign funds overseas, okay? You can't just not honor these people's debt and cut social security benefits while unemployment soars. Or it can tolerate high inflation. Now the word tolerate, I would change for orchestrate. They want inflation, they need inflation because of their debt. One last one here, gold stocks are selling off on the false belief that a recession will rid the economy of inflation. In reality, a severe recession will result in even higher inflation as the Fed prints money like crazy to stimulate the economy. 
prop up asset prices and monetize federal debt. This is absolutely right. They cannot continue to tolerate this downside. Inflation is coming off the back of this pivot. Gold is telling us this. Gold is telling us it wants to break out of this cup and handle. Has it got to sweep the lows before it can go? Maybe. But if you look at this on a, these are six month candles, these eight year cycle lows, we've got the next one coming into focus. You know, are we going to drop down here? It doesn't seem likely. We first got to go up, confirm this bull market. And then I think what you're going to see is a repeat of this. And the reason for this is we're currently in a turbulent inflationary period ahead, just like we were in the seventies. Okay. So are we going to see one of these extensions back here? added to here most probably now keep in mind it's going to be a very bumpy ride just like the month to month change in red here but the ultimate goal for gold and for bitcoin is this black line smoothed out and zoomed out you're going to notice the price of gold in in dollars this time and the price of bitcoin in dollars is going to go exponentially higher over this decade and this is an illustration that i've got for you here which shows why it's so important to take some steps to protect yourself and your wealth and your family's wealth from inflation. Okay. If you have half a million in the bank at 3% inflation after 30 years, it's only going to have 205 K's worth of buying power or 206 call it. But what if we're at 10%? Okay. That's their CP line number. Remember that's what they're telling us. Inflation is, well, you're going to have 28 and a half grand left from your 500 K. Okay, after just 10 years at 10%, you're going to have sub 200. Do you see the severity here? Keep in mind, the real number is 20%. This is the number they give us, but the real number is probably north of 20%. It's only going to get worse. Make no mistake, a Fed pivot is coming, but it's going to come in the form of a pause, most likely. Not stopping QT, not restarting QE. Those will both come later in the cycle after the pause. But the pause will trigger this risk on rally. And I think that's what we're setting up for. I think we're going to get a pause. They've already hinted that they might have to pause rates, just have a look and see what's going on in September. And then likely we get this big risk on rally. And at some point, of course, you're going to see Bitcoin decouple from the stock markets. Comparing Bitcoin to dot com tech stocks is dumb. Now, whilst the prices, if you overlay them on the charts, they seem very correlated. Why? Why should they be? Why should a peer to peer decentralized network? behave like a tech stock okay you're going to see this decouple this is the end of a big debt cycle the writing is on the wall for sovereign debt and the world needs a new store of value there won't be a 15 year slow climb back to all-time highs like when the dot-com tech stocks all got destroyed we're going to be running back turbo so strap in and this is absolutely right just take a look at this chart again okay this is we're going parabolic beyond parabolic Adam Back says, when Zeta hash? Now, quick pause here. In case you're not familiar with the terminology, hash, killer hash, mega hash, giga hash, terra hash, peta hash, so on and so forth. So we are currently in the exahash region, which is one quintillion hashes per second. This is what secures the Bitcoin network. And he's saying, when Zeta hash? So that's another three orders of magnitude above quintillion, okay, a sextillion. Going back here, when Zeta hash for Bitcoin, it's currently only five times what we are at the moment, which is 200 exa hashes. Okay, so 200 of these, that's what we got. Five times that will bring us to the Zeta hash territory. Why is that important? Well, in addition to having five times the security, it would also be supportive of a $100,000 Bitcoin price. Mining profitability would get more efficient as ASICs are getting more efficient. So then for, we'll end up with the joules per Terra hash and therefore the Terra hash per dollar cost becoming way more efficient. So this means that it won't even need to have five times the number of computers and miners connected to the network. These newer machines that can mine more efficiently, 20 to 40 joules per terahash, are going to push out these older machines that currently mine at 70 to 100 joules. So the miners, the mining rigs, the ASIC machines, these are going to get significantly in the next generation, significantly more efficient than what we're currently using. So that means we don't need to have 5x the amount of miners and five times the amount of ASICs plugged into the network without even increasing the number. And of course, the number of miners is actually increasing every day as new equipment comes online. So we could actually see us cross the Zeta hash territory rather fast. And that would absolutely be supportive of a 100k Bitcoin price. So I look forward to seeing the day. We will certainly cross Zeta hash at some point. It's just a matter of, uh, of time.
And finally, I want to leave you with this as a challenge. A woman I helped onboard into Bitcoin a month ago just told me she's orange pilled five other women. This is how it's done. So I want to set you the challenge for this weekend. See if you can orange pill someone. If you do, come back here. Let me know how it went. Throw it down in the comments. And so the dollar. The dollar looking like it's coming off. Is it going to make another run? Are we going to violate this parabola? I don't know. Um, kind of interesting that we are getting close to this 60 day cycle low now for Bitcoin. And also interesting that this pivot is getting closer and closer all the time. So we'll keep an eye on that. Here goes Bitcoin looking to climb back up. So weekend games, thin liquidity, thin order books this weekend, as always. Will there be games played? We still have to kind of drop into this cycle low down here. I think this is way too early to be a 60 day cycle low. So much more like a half cycle bounce coming out of here and then a drop down into the 60 day low. But we'll see. Of course, the grayscale ETF approval due on the 6th. Will that be the catalyst? I can see ETH is back above 1200. So that's good to see. Oil is making a bounce off of this level, so can we get a rejection off of this upper box and come down here? And that would give the Fed much more credibility in their pivot, as I've explained in prior videos. Gold and silver look like, is this the double bottom? Did we survive? What about gold? Gold's hanging on. Is it going to hold this? I think there's a very good chance that we're going to see a, met a precious metals bull market coming up. And I'm really looking forward to this, but I don't want to be jumping in front of any trains. I don't want to be trying to guess or assume anything i think we're going to wait for a proper technical breakout and then uh, maybe this can come down here and then we're going to look to capture as much of this move as we can so make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that the stonks equity markets getting a good bounce off of here one or two things can happen can't it we're going to break out and re-enter here or i guess the other option is we could short from down here if we can't break this line. So one of these two things should happen, shouldn't it? We'll, we'll see how it goes. If you found value here, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and I really hope you enjoy your weekend. Take care out there, all the best.